I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Yesterday, my partner and I moved to our new place. And as so many of you probably know, moving is quite the adventure in itself and can often prove quite frustrating. Well, at one point during our setting of things up, my partner was trying to put together an IKEA piece of furniture which I've come to conclude Ikea is something that was sent by the devil himself. <laughs> it leads us into temptation in more ways than one. <laughs> Anyways, as he was putting this piece together, he was getting frustrated because things weren't coming together and he shouted out, God, what have I done that you've given this to me? All setting aside, I think we often say that line, Lord, what have I done to deserve this? What have I done? In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be taking a look at a, a very important scripture text of the Old Testament, the book of Job. Job is perhaps one of my favorite texts it's an example in which scripture itself challenges other parts of scripture. At the time of its writing, it was believed that if one sinned, one would face divine retribution. And a sign of that divine retribution would be poor health, a loss of wealth, and all other troubles. Job, however, challenges that narrative. Now we may think of this as something that's foreign and long ago, but in truth, many people of faith still believe that God punishes them and that their misfortune, their ill health, is somehow a sign that they have done something wrong. Or in some cases, some people think that their wealth and prosperity is a sign that they are loved by God, such as my paternal aunt. Some years ago, I went to visit my aunt and uncle out in Portland, Oregon. I generally avoid talking about religion with them because my aunt in particular is this very devout evangelical. And we were driving one day along the Pacific coast and my aunt started to share with me, she said, look, God really loves us. Look at all the wealth, our beautiful home, our mountain cottage, God really loves us. Her statement bothered me because I wondered, and I said to her aloud, but what about the countless people throughout the world who have nothing? Does God not love them? She didn't respond, and needless to say, we didn't talk about faith or religion much more on that trip. But it's a good question. And it's a question that will come up in the book of Job. For Job, as we hear, is this righteous man who loved God, who gave everything that he had to God, only to be struck with incredible misfortune. Yet Job remains faithful to God. And in the coming weeks, we will hear how Job remains faithful as with every step of losing everything. And his friends will challenge him and will say to him, Job, what have you done? You must have clearly sinned, for this is your misfortune. And Job will plead his innocence. 
The book of Job challenges this notion that somehow we can win God's favor by the things that we do, or somehow that God's love for us is diminished when we do wrong. The truth, however, is entirely opposite, as we shall see in the book of Job. God's love for us is not dependent upon our goodness. It's not dependent upon how well we live in our life. Whether God's love, God's love does not discriminate. Now, to be sure, the book of Job doesn't resolve a big question. Why then does Job suffer? Now, the text will say that Satan, who we have to be careful of here, Satan isn't quite the image that you and I have developed in our own time, but rather Satan at the time was a person who advocated or was an adversary, and pardon the expression in our own modern time, the devil's advocate. His role was to question and to challenge God, to make a point. But as we shall see, he fails and he loses because Job remains ever faithful to God. The book of Job will challenge us to consider what is the nature of suffering and why do good people suffer. But it makes clear from the very beginning that suffering is not a sign of God's wrath or hate for us. Rather, as we shall see, God's favor is always upon us. Amen.